problem that you're going to see is when she travels. It's that right front leg and it paddles out. I believe it might be due to an old injury. Yes. I believe you know any she... history with her? I know that she, she... She was used in competition. What competition? I believe low-level dressage, possibly eventing. So you probably could all really see how poorly she moves. She's really stiff through the shoulders, she's really stiff in back. She looks like uh, she was made up out of two rat cars, I think. But the more the most even though there's that pattern going in, the most prominent thing was this right shoulder and that left hind working really poorly in a diagonal pattern. So what I'm gonna do first is release this. Adjust the pole, adjust the low back in this area. Sounds good. This is after. <laughs> well, this is what okay. we do. We keep her turned out so that at least she's moving. Just follow up and back, please. Just for five, ten minutes. Yeah. That would be easier. Yeah. Lunge as well. This time? She's got big problems. Yes. 
So this is after one treatment. Yeah. This is the after one treatment. Okay, Carl, that's fine, thanks. What we're really looking at is preparing it for a more specific but more focused change for the treatment next time. That's fine, Carl, you don't need to kill yourself. <laughs> Thanks. Well, no. You all know that horses run on their fingertips, right? Yeah. You know that. Okay. How old's Tia? Seventeen. Oh, and do you know what sort of work she's done before? I believe she did eventing. Uh, no, he's on the crepitus. That's a clunky, crunchy sound you sometimes get with all the horses. So I can see how it tracks up and go back in the simulation. This is after one treatment, but before the second treatment. This is after one treatment, but before the end of the second treatment. But what it also does, it re reduce, uh, releases some endorphins, so she actually feel quite nice and empty. She realizes it's good for her. Just walk around with she does. Oh. What are you doing right now? This is called a neuromuscular technique, which is uh, a fancy way of saying stretching the muscle. But it's more specific than that. You take up tension in the muscle to the point where there's an equal resistance, and you just hold that pressure, and eventually uh, the muscle releases, starts to soften, and at that point you can let go of the technique. So it's basically the muscles relaxing? Yeah. The muscle, the subclavian muscle is so involved in the poise of the head that it's, it very rarely gets a rest. So it becomes quite tonic, quite uh, toxic. A lot of the byproducts of metabolism hang around in the muscle. The muscle gets quite fibrotic and tough and loses its suppleness. And this is a really good technique of releasing that. So also a good like way of working into the pore as well. Yeah, it's just softening. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I think she likes it. Yeah, they don't mind too. Does it hurt them? Far more, yeah. yeah I mean, do that to <laughs> yourself. Yeah, she seems to... It's like the Spock death grip. She's a lot. <laughs> I know, but I, I feel like after now she's and I'm not mine like, much. I know, no, she's, she's like falling nice asleep. Eye, nice soft eye. She's quite enjoyable. Yeah. This point I'm needing here is where uh, the nuchal ligament comes in. It's a big, powerful ligament that runs the entire length of the horse, right from the pole all the way to the tail. It's very tough, not very stretchy material, but it supports the neck. So we hear people talking about getting a good top line. It's really important to uh, be aware of the function of the nuchal ligament as a horse. It's best to hold the feed horses from the floor if you can, because that will stretch and lift this. It will turn the abdominals. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh. That was cool. <laughs>
This is after. This is after two treatments. And again, this is after two treatments. Go ahead, one more time. 